the, the one word that's really coming forward as we're sitting here and as I've, I've heard so much tonight is the word integration, and which leads to synthesis. And so I'd like to just kind of go there for a couple minutes. <clears throat> we have a polarized political system because we have polarized minds. And our political system is an expression of our own consciousness as a society. There's no difference. And so when we split things into good and bad and right and wrong and good and evil and good guy and bad guy, when we do that in our own minds, that's the world we're creating, that polarized world. And I think that that's like, if I could start us at one place, it's to, it's to start in that recognition that we are responsible. This is our republic, right? In a monarchy, the power comes from lineage, quote unquote. In a theocracy, the power comes from God. In a republic, the power to rule comes from the people. This is our republic. We are responsible. And so that's like the first place I want to really get into. So there's no them. There's no good guys, bad guys. There's no 1%. There's no power elite. There's no corrupt politicians. It's us. It's our world. It's our society. It's our republic. It's what we're creating. And if we want to create something that's fundamentally different than what we see, we have to create something fundamentally different than what we see when we look in the mirror. And so... If you know the Matrix, the, the, the Matrix as, a, as a movie, which has so many rich metaphors, uh, One Nation is about the red pill. Mm -hmm. And no one's promised comfort in One Nation. In fact, everybody's promised that you, you have to be confronted. We all have to be confronted. This isn't about promising something that you want to hear in order to gain favor. It's about how can each of us realize a way that we've been trying to hide or been trying to not look at something so we can stay comfortable? And how can we take that and put that comfort on the table, forsake it, and get uncomfortable to look at ourselves and to look at each other, to look at our own inadequacies or our own shadows or our own blind spots so that we can rise? And as we as individuals rise, our republic will rise. And so to bring this, this conversation of integration, <clears throat> our dualistic minds have created this dualistic political system. And <clears throat> there's a lot of elements to the exact nature of the voting and the exact nature of political parties, and, 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 and there's a lot of ways you can talk about how we've created a, a dualistic political system. So I'm not saying it's the only thing, um, but it's, it's fundamentally, I think, the most important thing for us to be looking at right now. And <clears throat> there's, as, as many of you probably know, I think a, a fact I quoted in one of the videos that many of you saw is that a very small minority of America is actually controlling the narrative on the right. And a very small minority of America is controlling the narrative on the left. It just so happens that that's where the media voice is. And so it takes a minority and then blows it up. So we think it's all of us. We think we're all fighting each other. But we're actually not all fighting each other. And then we think, okay, great. If this is one extreme over here and this one extreme over here, then maybe the answer is to compromise is to be able to meet in the middle. And I think that if I could leave this conversation and land one piece about what we're here to do, it's actually to dispel the ideal of compromise or meeting in the middle. We're not trying to come together and meet in the middle. A, a child that comes from man or woman isn't the compromise of the man or the woman. It's the synergy when the man and the woman integrate and birth something completely new. So that's why we use the metaphor of the triangle, that icon of the triangle that you've seen, because it symbolizes taking two things that 
we thought were different and fundamentally opposed and putting them together to create something new. And when a man and a woman integrate, then new life becomes possible. And I'd like to provide a new lens that you can look as you look at this left-right conversation that you might have never thought of before. And that is this, this dichotomy, this polarity between love and power. And the conversation that I don't hear anywhere else is how we don't do this anymore with more powers one on this side and more loves one on this side and where power and love are fighting each other like a man and a woman in a dysfunctional situation are fighting each other. But what I'm curious about is what happens when we actually bring love and power together. What does that integration look like? And that's going to look like something that we don't have any reference point for. It's actually a, a fundamentally deep and emergent and exciting process, as exciting as a man and a woman coming together and making a new child. And love says we want to make sure that all the children are taken care of. And power says we want to be able to protect. And when these things keep working not in full relationship with each other, they start to become pathological. And we envision a future where we don't just meet in the middle, but we actually create the space for love and power to be able to come together so that those who love power learn how to love love as much as those who love love. And those who love love learn how to love power as much as those who love power. <clears throat> and what would it look like for the generals of this world and the CEOs of this world and the mayors and the governors of this world to feel the sense of love that a mother feels for a newborn baby in how they operate and the choices that they make with the power that they have. And what would it look like for a mother with the love of a newborn baby and the love of all newborn babies and the love of all life to be given the power of governors and mayors and generals? What would it look like for us to start to bring love and power together? And, and how could we birth something new by doing just that? Our political system is actually a reflection of our economic system. So we don't just change our political system. It's like if somebody has a skeletal issue and a muscular issue, they can go to the chiropractor and they can pop their, their spine back in place. But if there was a muscular issue more based than that, it's gonna pull the skeleton back out of alignment. So that muscular system is, 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 is stronger of a system than the skeletal system. Our economic system is stronger, like the muscular system than the political system. It's always gonna pull the political system to become whatever it wants it to be. Our economic system is a result of our culture. It's a result of, of, of what we value as people. It's a result of what matters and what we prioritize. And so our commitment in this one nation context and conversation is to actually go all the way in to the cultural implications of our economic and our political system, which is the man in the mirror conversation. It's, it's who are you and who am I and how can I realize something I've never realized before 
so that I can actually rise into a higher culture, into a more compassionate culture, into a more integrative culture. And then that is what's going to allow us to be able to create and sustain new economic models, which is going to allow us to create and sustain new political models. And I argue that there's nothing that we can do in the current political system to get us off of the freight train that we're on. There's not a new candidate. There's not a new policy. There's not a new budget allocation. If you happen to be really in favor of socialism, even if we had some massive shift of our economic and our political system to be more in that favor, it's just gonna get pulled right back. It's gonna get ripped apart until we actually have a renaissance of our own civic consciousness, such that we improve the quality of our thinking and see things that we used to see as polarities that we used to judge and we start to reconcile in those in our own mind, then we won't be able to create that world. And so One Nation is, a, is, is, is that space to invite us, to, if you realize that, if you realize that no little change in how our system works is gonna get the job done, and you realize that we need to change and we need to change each other, then, then this is a place for you. But it's not going to scratch the itch that most people want to be scratched. Because most people want to, oh, just tell me what the new policy is or who the new person is, and then if we do that thing, then everything's gonna get better. That conversation is a lie. That conversation will never go to the depth that we need to go to be able to rebirth our society. And what we're doing with One Nation is we're finding who knows that that's a lie and who's willing to go on a deeper journey that can set up the next generations for a better world. Because we spent years and decades actually uncovering what's possible, what's broken and what's possible. <clears throat> so it's possible that we could have these types of conversations as a group of friends or as a spiritual community. Um, but we've very intentionally formed One Nation as a political party, right? Because we're creating a new space for us to engage politically, a new space for us to organize politically, a new space for us to be able to move a new set of values and priorities and culture and, dare I say, frequency, to use kind of a spiritual term, but a new energetic into the office of government. And I think a lot of times we think about the office of government and political parties from the standpoint of a presidential candidate or a president. I think that's a very, very important conversation to have. But we can reduce that all the way down to a mayor and to city council and to a county sheriff and to a governor and to a state representative and to a congressional representative. It doesn't take that many votes to elect a new mayor in office or to decide who the sheriff is going to be. And by organizing this conversation with this depth of care of cultural transformation within ourselves and the world, within a political context, creating that ballot access, we then can start to, little by little, perhaps, or maybe in a mad rush, depending on how ready the world is. But we can start to penetrate these elected offices with a deeper level of thinking and a deeper level of care. And by leaders who are committed to doing the work on themselves, to actually be an embodiment of the energetic, uh, integrative synthesis of love and power. And I think that that's when we're gonna start to see things radically transform. When we look at the cultural issue 
um, some deep think tanks and philosophers that I'm connected to have identified that the center of the cultural challenge that we face is what we call win-lose thinking. And win-lose thinking at its core is the willingness to win, even if it means that somebody else will lose. And so we see it over and over and over and over and over again, and the more power somebody has, the more it expands what we can see. Holy smokes, I can't believe what that CEO allowed to happen. They made a little bit of extra profits, but they totally polluted such and such, as one example. And the list goes on and on and on. But again, that win-lose mentality, it lives inside of us. It's the thing that allows us to judge somebody else, to think that somebody might be less righteous or less intelligent, the thing that might allow us to dehumanize somebody or write somebody off for who they voted for, who they supported. And so when we find ourselves doing that and judging and dehumanizing people and thinking we know something about somebody else, how wrong and stupid and immoral they must be to come to the conclusion they've come to, we're as inside of that win-lose culture as somebody who has more power that's just expressing it at a larger scale because they have that access to it. And we would likely be doing the same thing if we were in that same position. It's very important that we realize that. And with the, the, the flip that we get a switch is that flip, and some of you guys seen this in some of the content, from win-lose to what we call all-win. And it's a new fundamental cultural code where we say, I want to win, but my winning is connected to everybody else's winning. And when we move into all win as leaders, as elected officials, as leaders of our communities, it then brings along with it a whole new set of skills that are required in order to carry out that all win culture. First, we have to be able to know ourselves and our own voice and speak clearly. Second, we have to be able to see things from multiple perspectives. Great. I used to judge you and think you were totally, didn't know what you were talking about, but now I'm going to actually listen because there might be just something that you've been trying to communicate that I wasn't ready to hear. Oh, oh, holy smokes. I never thought about it that way. And so when I start to see things from multiple perspectives and start to listen, then new awarenesses fire. And now we start to experience a true synergy. And we start to realize that our difference was actually a fundamental premise that would allow us to do something special together if we could listen to each other and share the different perspectives that we've been holding. So I move to see things from multiple perspectives. Another core characteristic needed in the all-win culture is to be able to think holistically. And holistic thinking is the opposite of opinion-based thinking. Holistic thinking, there's no end to it. In holistic thinking, you wanna take everything into consideration as much as you possibly can, and there's no end to that. So a holistic-based thinking puts us in a position of inquiry, of never-ending questions. Well, what will be the implications of this? What will be the implications of this? And what are the potential unintended consequences of this? And what's the long-term implication of that? And how would we better understand the impact that it would have on this and on the people and on the moss and on the fleas and on the flies and on the future and on the seven generations? And with holistic thinking, we just keep expanding our understanding of an issue. And every time that expansion occurs, we are now better positioned to provide stewardship and leadership to that very thing because we understand it better. And that leads us to be able to create all win solutions. I'm in a position that there's no issue in America that we consider to be fundamentally polarizing that we couldn't actually create in a culture of common ground and understanding, not only a compromise, but an all-win solution on every single topic. It's a matter of our care, of our holistic thinking, our creativity, our actually listening to other people's perspectives, actually getting on every topic what matters and using that as design criteria to be able to figure out new solutions 
that aren't even being thought about right now. Just like a man and woman come together to create a child that is not a little bit of the man, a little bit of the woman, like it kind of is, but it's not like a compromise of two. It's something new that's birthing through. And, and we have, we stand at the possibility, we have all of the information inside of America, inside of the world, to be able to create all in solutions. The pieces just haven't been able to come together yet. And so what we're talking about with One Nation is building a membership base of people who themselves are committed to be on the path of embodying that all-in culture and those core skills required to do so. And then to start to organize so that we can actually move people that are committed to that path into positions of governmental leadership to model that to the world that we can actually think a new way and we can talk a new way and we can feel a new way. The magnitude of the challenges that we have in our society um, require a completely new quality of thinking. And I believe that this all-win paradigm is the quality of thinking that the challenges and the opportunities of today are calling for. So <clears throat> there's a little bit of an orientation and an overview um, just to start the conversation, um, we are beginning the process of inviting people to actually register and join the network, just like several of you have mentioned you've already chosen to do. And that is where the relationship begins. And that is where we begin to organize and we begin to communicate with each other and we begin to discover what we can do to work on ourselves and find other people that want to be on that same path and continue to create a new domain of political organizing that's not a little bit of the left or a little bit of the right, but is, is it, a, is it, a, is it a, a, an integrative synthesis, a superposition from this win-lose paradigm. And it's really been a pleasure to find people that are connecting and feeling that there's something true here. And it's a challenge for me because there's hours of content that I would love to bring forward. Um, and so we have to actually rely upon something deeper, which is a deeper sense of knowing. Because there's a deeper sense of knowing in each of you potentially right now that knows that if this conversation is something that you're feeling called to continue to be a part of and to be able to support, and would you like to see a world where embodied leaders of love and power are the ones that we're electing and where the conversations that focus on all win solutions is the type of legislative conversation that we're having. If that's what values, that what you value, then we make a very clear invitation to help us build and establish this new political network. It was a member just like Mark and Marsha who said, yeah, I'll bring some friends together. And now we have 20, 25 people that have seen materials and that, have, um, that are in this conversation right now. And so every person that says yes has impact and has reach and has network, and has power. And if you wanna get engaged, and if you wanna feel like you're participating in the political system, but don't know what to do or who to do that with or how to channel that, this is a space to be able to channel it. And we're committed to figuring out this together. And we're committed, or we're connected to extremely smart people, extremely caring people who have been working to better understand the core systemic issues of our country and of our world, profound think tanks doing phenomenal work, and One Nation becomes a little bit of muscle in the world for those insights and those realizations, for us to start to be able to do something about that rather than just talk about it. We have a major campaign coming up in 2020 we call the All Win Rebirth. 
And that's what we're committed to doing, is initiating a deeper awareness that incremental changes aren't going to cut it. And it's actually even the belief that incremental changes might come and cut it that's one of the most dangerous things that we have. Because we should be very concerned with a lot of different aspects of how our society is working. We should be very concerned about that. And we need to be having conversations that hold the possibility of actually getting the job done. You know, America is a leader in this world. It is a leader in this world. A lot of people are very proud to be an American and the way that we have a leadership role in this world. Other people are um, not as proud because of the way that we exhibit our force and our power in the world. But the truth of the matter is we do have a leadership role in this world, and we have for hundreds of years. And this is an opportunity for us in America to rebirth that leadership role. And how America goes, so too will the world go. And so this isn't just about a conversation about American politics. It's a conversation about leveraging American politics to create planetary conscious transformation and to ground that conscious transformation all the way into how we organize our society.